You're watching the news at 10 on Channel Television, reaching you live from Lagos. Let's quickly shift over to our Abuja studios now with Ibrahim Adra for a couple of more stories. Ibrahim. Hello, Gimba. Now, the best way for the military to serve and be accountable to the Nigerian people is to carry out its constitutional duty with strict adherence to the rules of engagement. And this is the position of the Acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanko Mohammed, at the 2019 Laws of Armed Conflict Retreat for the Nigerian Air Force. Justice Tanko says, considering the nature of recent military engagements, the military cannot function without public support. And here's our correspondent, Amaka Okafo, with details. It's a gathering of the legal minds in the Nigerian Air Force and their civilian counterparts. They are gathered to appraise the laws of armed conflict, especially in the face of many security challenges in the country. Expressing concerns on some of the reports of human rights violation in the course of carrying out their duty, the Chief of Air Staff however says that it has acted within the ambit of the law and will continue to do so. It's no longer news that several reports by non-governmental organizations of alleged grave violations of international laws and human rights by the Nigerian military. Unfortunately, these mostly unverified allegations have over time portrayed the military in bad light and have as well impacted negatively on our fight against insurgency. It is important to state that in all these operations, our activities have been guided by the principles of the laws of armed conflict. The Acting Chief Justice of Nigeria have advised the military to continue to act within the law if it wants to continue to win public trust, which is critical to its fight against insecurity. But considering the asymmetric nature of the type of war we are now engaged in, the military cannot function effectively without public support. If we juxtapose this with the increasing focus and the criticism of military operations at both local and international levels, the need to act within the law during the military operations, therefore, becomes undeniably, uh, undeniably imperative. It is expected that lessons learned from this retreat will have the required effect on the military operations. Amaka Okafo, Channels Television News. And elsewhere, over 200 youths from Ibejuleki in Lagos are currently undergoing a skills acquisition program put together by Nangote Petroleum Refinery and Petrochemicals. According to the Group Executive Director at Nangote Industries Limited, Mr. Devakumar Edwin, the program is part of their corporate social responsibility projects centered on the development and well-being of the people, especially in host communities. The vocational training are in six skills sets and will last for six months. As part of a growing tradition of the Dangote Group, a business empire that makes significant contributions to the country's economy, youths of Ibejibleki have been listed for a skills acquisition program. The community is hosting the Dangote Refinery and Petrochemical, and just before the plant commences operation, management is looking to cultivate skills that could be needful from its host community. This is an area which is primarily focused on fishing. So the, the community's core business has been fishing. So traditionally, generation after generation, right from the time they are kids, they get into the boat, boat go with the parents and acquire that skill. But that is a limited skill. And also the opportunities to grow is not much. So if we train them, they, if they want, they can get their employment with us. Or if they want, they can go and start their own small and medium enterprises. And for which we can also tie up through our Dakota Foundation and with the banks to assist them with loan facility to start their business. The training, which is in conjunction with the National Directorate of Employment, is targeting vocational skills such as plumbing, masonry, welding, iron bending, auto mechanics and electrical works because of the instant value addition to their lives and communities. Dangote, like I said, has taken the bull by the horn. They've gone far. In fact, not only the skill acquisition program they've embarked on, but with the uh, 
giving out scholarships. Since it's a continuous chain, and within a short period of time, we start re I mean, reaping the fruits of what Dangote has uh, actually started. And the joy of a young trainee says it all. I see myself like making different kind of designs. Furniture. I told my brother before you get married next year, I'm going to do nice furniture for him for his bedroom and his parlor. For me, having this skill and with my degree, it will be a great joy for me. Call it preparing the future, and you can't be wrong. This project is one of the various tailor made interventions of the Dangote Group wherever it does business. The Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas Limited and the Nigerian Content Development Monitoring Board have signed the Nigeria Content Plan for NLNG's Train 7 project, estimated at $1 billion. The managing director of NLNG, engineer Tony Atta, says the Train 7 project is the biggest project that will unlock Nigeria's gas potentials. The Train 7 project is expected to ramp up NLNG's production capacity by 35% from 22 million tons per annum to 30 million tons per annum. It's the sign of ceremony of the NLNG Train 7 Nigerian Content Plan as officials of the Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas Limited, led by its managing director at the Nigerian Content Development Monitoring Board, converge in Abuja to give effect to the plan. The managing director of the Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas Limited outlines the benefits of the project. But well, we believe that this opportunity of Trade 7 project is by far the, bigger, the biggest opportunity for us to contribute in this space. And we believe that today's opportunity is before us, is one that we will take, is one that we do not want to miss by any chance. For the Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Content Development Monitoring Board, the sign of ceremony is an attestation of good collaboration. This event in itself is an attestation of what genuine collaboration can bring between a regulator and an operating company. I am delighted that NLNG, as usual, is setting the pace, not only in the midstream sector, but also in its commitment towards developing Nigerian content in the oil and gas industry. Officials of ENI, Total, Shell and NNPC at the ceremony pay tribute to the NLNG for its foresight. The high point of the event is the actual sign of ceremony witnessed by the stakeholders. The NLNG Train 7 Nigerian Content Plan will form the operating guide for project execution and monitoring. It would also aid the maximization of Nigerian content deliverables in the project by giving first consideration to indigenous goods, services and human resources, including providing opportunities to Nigerian companies. Well, time now to region our Lagos studio where Coyote is standing by for more reports from the world of business. Coyote. You first. First Bank. Thank you, Ibrahim, and you're welcome to Business News. A growing number of African champions have put gender parity at the top of their agenda. However, the transition of women from executive committees to boards of directors remains a challenge. This was brought to the fore at the ongoing Africa CEO Forum in Kigali, Rwanda. One of the sessions on women in business provided a platform for discussions on the challenges on gender balance and possible solutions. With a topic, women on boards shattering the glass ceiling, Bella Disu, the executive vice chairman Globacom, was on hand to share the story of her journey to the board of Globacom, a family business, at the age of 18. My father always said to me, look, you're 18 and this is the platform you're on. You just have to assert yourself. Now, the other side of it was I felt at that time I had to put on a more masculine demeanor. I had to just sort of be a bit manly so people would take me seriously. But the downside of that was 
I, I realized over time I was utilizing too many task skills and not balancing with relationship skills. From a privately owned business to a publicly quoted company, she made her mark. When I got appointed to the board of Chilisberga in 2017, I thought, okay, now I'm coming out of this cocoon of having been in family businesses. And what I then realized is that as a leader, you must always be humble enough to keep learning, keep that continuum of learning going. So the key thing has been self-development. So I'm now overlooking four different sectors of the economy. So telecommunications, construction, property, and now manufacturing. Other women present at the session also shared their insights and how the governments and corporates can promote gender diversity in the boardroom. They think that in the board meetings we, we talk more strategy vision, so it's not a, a, a place for women. So it's up to women to say, yes, we are very good experts, very good at our jobs, we do a very precise job, but we also have a vision and strategy. The two things that I think South Africa has done very well is in having legislation which is very enabling, but also legislation which is very unapologetic. Um, legislation says we need to see women, um, we need to see a racial change in the profile of people at board level, at senior management level, in all the companies that are in South Africa. There is no doubt that when you train a woman, you train a nation. The discussions here buttress that expression that says, what a man can do, a woman can do better. Just give her a chance. From the convention center here in Kigali, I'm Chimezie Obi Iwago, reporting for Channels Television News. Well, let's head over to the NSC, where trading at the Nigerian stock market was relatively sluggish on the day, as interest rates were cut by the Monetary Policy Committee. Tene Lashabo Ali has a summary of the day's transactions. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. A very sluggish Tuesday at the Nigerian Stock Exchange on the day the central bank cut interest rate for the first time in nearly two years. The composite index was 0.01% soft on the back of weak trading sentiment, while the total value of listed securities stood at 11.671 trillion naira. Volume and value of shares traded were significantly lower as 143.7 million stocks worth over 1 billion naira changed hands in 3,457 deals. Three out of the five major sectors closed in the green. However, losses from the consumer goods and banking indices outweighed other counters. Consumer good was down 0.54% while the banking index shared 0.38 percent. Interestingly, shares of big lenders such as FBN Holdings, Access Bank and UBA were the most actively traded. And that's it on the Stock Market Report. I'm Teniola Joboali. Thank you, Teniola. On a global scale now, stocks in Asia have rebounded from previous losses and major European bourses traded in positive territory today as investors monitor latest Brexit development. But let's see the rest of the numbers for more in the global markets. And that's business news for tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Kayode Okikulu. It's now back to Gimba. You first. First bank. We have an important story just right now. The police in Zamfara State have confirmed the sudden disappearance of a North Korean medical doctor, Mr. Jang Sunil, who is feared to have been abducted by armed bandits in Chafi, local government area of the state. The Korean national is attached to the general hospital in Chafi, local government. Although a statement issued by the spokesperson of the Zamfara State Police Command, DSP Shehu Mohammed, says that the disappearance of Sunil was reported at the Chafi Divisional Police Office by one of his colleagues, Dr. Lee Dong, uh, there are still unconfirmed reports about his whereabouts. The statement further disclosed that the State Commission of Police
has directed the Criminal Investigation and Intelligence Department, the CIID, State Intelligence Bureau, the SIB, and Anti-Kidnapping Squad to commence a discreet investigation as well as to conduct search and rescue operations for the missing expatriate. Still ahead on the news at 10, Algeria's army chief of staff asked Constitutional Council to declare President Abdulaziz Bouteflika unfit to rule after weeks of protests. Join us again. <laughs>